Well, I've got some boxes to unbox here. So while I do that, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about answer, answer a question that I have had posed to me a couple of times recently that uh, I, I really feel like we need to discuss a little bit. People have been asking lately, what can I 3D print and make money with? Ooh, Zortrax filament. Okay, that's good. That'll go good with my Zortrax printer that I get to play with. I'll be checking this out later. See, when people ask me what sort of thing they want to 3D print to make money, what they're really asking is, what's the Thingiverse number of something that's already made, that's ready to go, that is profitable to sell and print with? And the answer to that question is nothing. There is nothing that you could possibly just go out, download, 3D print, and then sell and make money. And here's the reason why this question is fundamentally flawed. If I were to say right now on this video, go to this link, download this thing, print it and make money, there will immediately be no market for that thing. It'll be flooded because everybody else will see that answer, they'll go out, they'll do this and, and make money with this, and you will not be able to give away the things that you 3D print, whatever it is. However, despite what I just said, if you stick around to the end of this video, I will give you something that you can 3D print that will be guaranteed to make money. You know what? I've even done the market research for you that you need in order to make that happen. But first, we need to dispel some misconceptions. For some reason, people think that just owning a cheap 3D printer will lead to making money. And that is just not the case. Because if your cheap 3D printer is what you're trying to use to make money with, then your cheap 3D printer is actually your biggest competition. See, if somebody can simply buy the same 3D printer that you have for a couple hundred dollars, why would they pay you a couple hundred dollars to do their prints for them? Do you see what I mean? And if these 3D printers are so easy to use that anybody could do it, well then, what do they need you for? See, entrepreneurs know that to have a successful business, you have to give people what they want for less than they could do it themselves. See, here's the thing. If you want money, if you're asking, how do I make money, then you're in business, okay? It's not just print a thing and suddenly you have money. You have to take money from people. You have to be in business. And if you're trying to start a business that doesn't exist or even just starting any business, do you know what you are? You're an entrepreneur and that's good. You need to embrace the idea. <sighs> That's what this video is about. It's about changing you from the person who thinks, ah, I'll be able to make money from this to the mindset of an entrepreneur. Now, don't listen to the hype and definitely don't listen to the top Google results, okay? Being an entrepreneur is no guarantee. It's gonna be work. It's gonna be hustle in order to get this going. And it means you might have to change your mindset about things. It's not that hard. You can do it. Don't worry. It's it's fine. And even if this fails, you're going to find that you'll be a better person for it. In fact, you can pretty much bet that your first try is going to fail. But we'll talk about that in just a little bit. To begin with, I'm going to give you some steps that you need to follow. Step one, you need to get driven. You need to get that motivation, that drive. You need to be dissatisfied with your current life and the way things are going right now you need to you need to want it and that's the thing a lot of people who ask this question who are like hey what can i 3d print and make money for they're they're kind of too casual for this to work if that's okay if that's what you want just recognize that own it okay you know what i don't i don't want to make a million dollars with my 3d printer i'll be happy with just making a little bit with it maybe even just enough to pay for my filament which 
is what I did at the beginning. But I'm not going to tell you my story about all of this. I've already done that. And if you want to see that, there will be a link in the cards. But let's go on. Step number two. You need to be dissatisfied. I already said you need to be dissatisfied with your life, but this time I mean you need to be dissatisfied with everything. You need to look at the world around you as though everything could be better. Aw, that's a rubber ducky in there. You need to look at the world in such a way that no matter what you're doing, you think there's got to be a better way to do this. That mentality alone, training yourself to say there's got to be a better way is going to help you on the next step. Step number three, you're going on the hunt. You're looking for a market gap that you can fill, that you are uniquely qualified to fill. In Jay Samet's book, Disrupt You, he suggests that you write down every day three things that could be done better. And this is not so much looking for the idea, although you are, but this is to train your brain to look for ideas and be dissatisfied. It is to make you an entrepreneur. So every day you write down three things that could be done better. Maybe they're big things, maybe they're little things, but eventually what you're looking for is something that you can fulfill. Something that you have the ability, the skills, and the technology, that 3D printer that you're trying to use to make money, to fill. Chances are, eventually, you might find something if you just search long and hard enough. <sighs> Did some off-camera assembly, but the soul scanner is coming together. Although, two USB cables. I'm less excited about that, but... You know, for a $600 3D scanner, if it can take good scans, I suppose I shouldn't complain too much. So, where did we leave off last time? That's right, we're on the hunt. You're looking for something that your unique skill set will be able to answer the call of. And let's assume that you find something, that you've been on the hunt for a little while and you have a great business idea. Step four, do your market research. Now, I know that nobody likes to do research, but you can't just go into this thing thinking, ah, I'm totally unique. Nobody, nobody's doing anything like what I'm trying to do. No, no. There is something or somebody out there that is doing something similar to what you're thinking of. You have customers, you have competition, and don't think that you don't. You really have to come to terms with the fact that you do, and you need to know who they are. You need to know who your customers are going to be. Go talk to people who are going to want what you have to offer. Market research is going to be the number one step to you succeeding or failing. Just booting up the software here, and we'll, we'll check into that in just a second. But the next step is you might need to be prepared to sacrifice something. Think about your time, the day, as a pie chart. You've got 24 hours in that pie chart and you allocate some of them for sleep and some of them for eating and some of them for playing Xbox or whatever it is that you do. Or whatever it is that you do, you've got to fit this new venture into that pie chart somewhere and chances are something's got to go. Now, if you've already got a lot of idle time on your hands, then it might be easy, but I'll tell you personally, I haven't played a whole lot of video games in a long time and I don't watch as many movies as I used to because I'm exploring other options. This is just a reality you're going to have to accept. Now the next step is you need to be prepared to promote shamelessly. Don't be afraid to tell people what you've got and what you're doing. And of course, there are, depending on where you're doing your promotions, rules about promoting yourself. But that shouldn't stop you from being unashamed to say that you've got something that other people want and put it out in front of them. Now, does that mean that you should take out money for an ad on Google AdSense or something like that? Maybe. That's a part of your market research and I want you to do that right. But keep in mind that you could 
mess that up. Anytime you're spending money on something, it could be at a loss and maybe there's a cheaper way to do it. And so explore all your options. Now, the last step is you need to be ready to take people's money. And I put this step in there because for some people, myself included, it feels weird to give people something and take their money for it. It's a big step for some people to actually do that. But it's an important step. That's what you wanted in the first place. That's why you were asking, hey, what could I 3D print and make money? You're gonna have to take money from people. Now, this thing that you're looking for, it doesn't have to be anything big. Your customers could simply be members of your fan group that you're a part of, that you're pretty much the only person with a 3D printer and the idea to solve this. While these steps do apply to big ideas, they also apply to small ones as well. Now you may have realized that no step of this is go download this goober because chances are the goober you need isn't on Thingiverse. You're going to have to design. Fortunately, there are some super easy and free programs that you can get started with, but you're gonna have to learn. Now, are you going to be able to design a commercial product in Tinkercad? Well, yes, maybe. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be something that changes the world. It just has to be something that solves a problem for somebody. Now, at the beginning of this, I promised you a 3D model. I'm not going to promise you a download, just a 3D model that will work. All you have to do is you have to cast a smaller net. I mean, look locally. Find something in your local area and make a branded keychain. That is my 3D model for you. All you have to do is find a local high school team or a local college team or something that people get excited about, get their logo, put it on a keychain. You can totally do this in Tinkercad and then make that custom item custom to your area and share it with them. Now, at the beginning of this, I did say that I was going to do some market research for you, and I did. I happen to live in an area that has some high traffic tourism. So I went to the local store and saw how much a themed keychain goes for. Now, these keychains go for two to three dollars a piece. However, they are made of metal and are a little bit nicer than what would come out of a 3D printer. So take that into account. Still, if you're making something for an audience that nobody else is making something for, you could probably still command a two to three dollar price tag on it. And you might think, well, that's not a whole lot of money and it's not. But if you can keep the volume of this to only about five or six grams of plastic, that's less than a quarter of plastic on it. And if you're selling them for a conservative two dollars a piece, you print out 20 of those, you make $40, you've used less than a quarter of a spool and paid for the whole spool of plastic. Material wise, you're into black already, but all right, fine. You don't like that idea? Well, then I've already shown you how to find your own and how to go on the hunt. Do that, find your own. I'll even give you guys maybe a few hints. Maybe there is an object on Thingiverse that you could take your locally themed whatever and put it on there. You just need to have a wide enough open area on there. Just be careful to watch out for that license. You don't want to get in trouble. Or maybe you could get really creative. I knew somebody who was building planters. She had taken the letters of whatever local area thing that she was promoting built them in 3D and removed the top from them. And then she filled them with dirt and put plants into them. Now that'll take some time and effort to get up, but if there's a market for it and you can brand it to your local area, there you go. You've got another great idea. All right, looking good on the soul scanner. I'm excited about this. This is gonna be very cool. Now I wanna talk for a second about the branding myth. The myth that you need to develop your brand, that you need to get your brand up and running because if you don't have a brand, then people won't know you and they won't buy your stuff and relax. Worrying about your brand 
Before you have something to put your brand on, it's a bit like a schoolgirl writing her name next to his last name over and over again in her Trapper Keeper, but never actually going and talking to the guy while somebody else swoops in, asks him on a date, and steals her dream away. Like action before you worry about the branding. And the thing is, your branding will come it might just come organically. The fact of the matter is you already have a brand. You were given one at birth by your parents. Your name is your brand. Now, if you're somebody like me, who's got a very common name, you may want to think about getting something that's a little bit easier to Google. But again, your number one priority is to get something worth putting out there. And I'll tell you another secret you can rebrand. I would say you get one good rebrand. If you start to get some notoriety for what you're doing, you can rebrand it one time and people will follow. But if you're rebranding and rebranding and rebranding, that's no good. So don't worry about the brand too early. You, you can pivot on that later. Just don't stress about that right now. Now, what if your big idea requires a better 3D printer than the cheap one that you have or some additional technology that you don't have? Well, that's valid. And in fact, that is a valid way to make your business differentiated from other businesses because you have the technology that somebody else doesn't that might put you in demand. The danger there is that you're going to be spending overhead on an idea that isn't good. Always try to remember to fail as early as you can. So if there's any reason why this idea won't work, find it, explore it. Try to kill this idea as soon as you can. It's the ideas that won't die that you want to pursue. So be cautious, but at the same time, always be searching, always be on that hunt. And even when, even when you've got that great idea, you've got something that you're putting out there, always be looking for the next idea because no well is bottomless. At some point you're going to need to, that one's gonna die off, you're gonna need something else. So be looking for that. Well, I hope that this has started you at least on the path of being able to, to live your dream of making money with 3D printing. You may want to do some additional research and fortunately there is a lot of resources out there for you to check. Books have been written by people much more successful than me. So go out, research them. And hey, if you have any great insights, if you've done some good research, that's what the comment section is for. And I hope to see you there. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. I'm going to need that later because I don't get to keep this. I have to send it back when it's